Hi there, Grade 12s. I have prepared a algebra revision worksheet um, for you, and I'm just going to work through it. It contains a lot of the, the sections and the tricks that you would have learned in Grade 11, and even before that. So I suggest that as I introduce a question, you pause the video, you attempt the question, and then once you're done, you can push play and see the solution. Okay, so the first part of, the, of this worksheet, 1.1, asks you to simplify various expressions, and it does suggest you not use your calculator, even though they won't take it away, but yeah, you won't be tempted to use it. So this first question, they give you brackets of negative 3x cubed all squared. Right, so we need to get rid of these brackets here. You could rewrite this bracket, and you don't have to do this, but that square over there basically means that there is going to be two of those brackets, like so. Okay, you don't have to do that, but that's what that two means. Right, now in order to get rid of all these brackets, there's a negative three times another negative three. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. X cubed times another X cubed, when the bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So 3 plus 3 is 6. There's our answer, 9x to the power 6. In the second question, 1.1.2, they give you in brackets 4 to the power x, all to the power x. Now if I just go away from there for a moment, in our original exponential rules, you often, or you may have learned it this way, a to the power m, all to the power n, would have simplified to a to the power m n. In other words, if you've got a case like this, the m and the n get multiplied together to give you m n. Now that's what we're dealing with over here. So by applying our exponent rule here, we are going to get 4 to the power of, now these two get multiplied together, of x squared. So although that looks pretty awkward, there is our final answer. The x and the x multiply together to give x, x squared, just like the m times the n gave us mn. Okay. In 1.1.3, they give you a fraction, first of all, I notice. They give you the x's and the variables up in the exponents, and you cannot cancel, so I can't go cancel that with that, because there's a plus and there's a minus. There are two terms at the numerator and two terms in the denominator. So if you try cancel, that is very much the wrong thing to do. So we are going to have to take out a highest common factor. We are going to take out a highest common factor in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So one that you could take out, what could you take out at the numerator that's common to both of those terms? You could take out 3 to the power 2x, right? If I take out 3 to the power 2x from this first term, what is left? 3 to the power of 2. Do you remember, if I had to multiply this back in, 3 to the power 2x times 3 to the power 2, when you're timesing, you add the exponents. So you'll get 2x plus 2. There it is. Plus carries on there. That plus that was over there is going to be put over there. And this term here is going to be 3 to the power 1. Why? 3 to the power 2x times 3 to the power 1 would take you back to the power 3 to the power 2x plus 1. Okay, so I've taken out a HCF over there of 3 to the power 2x. I could have taken out something different to that, I'm sure. But if I take out 3 to the power 2x at the bottom, why would I take out the same HCF? Because I'll be able to cancel those away. Because that HCF is being multiplied with the brackets that follow. So we'd be able to cancel in the next step. What is left here? We've taken out a 3 to the power 2x. So once again, 3 to the power 2 is left. The minus is, is occurring here at the bottom. And this is going to be 3 to the power 1. Okay, so HCF happening here. As I said just now, you may cancel 3 to the power 2x with 3 to the power 2x. And our answer now is simply 3 to the power 2. What's 3 to the power 2? 9. 9 plus 3 is 12 over 3 to the power 2 is 9. 9 minus 3 is 6. So 12 over 6 looks a lot better than what we started with. And our answer then is 2. Please do not cancel in the first place. 
that is very much the wrong thing to do. So HCF for the win. Right. 1.2 might seem a different and awkward question, but it's actually not too bad. And it's testing your knowledge of thirds and writing something in its simplest third form. They tell you that the square root of 2 is A, and the square root of 3 is B. The question, to express root of 108 minus root 18 in terms of A and B. Right, the way we do it, these are both square roots. So you must ask yourself, what square number goes into 108 and what square number goes into 18? Watch how we do it. We write a slightly larger square root, and 108 can be broken up into 36 times 3. Do you agree? 36 times 3? Now, why did I choose 36 times 3? Because 36 is a square number, and it's going to work nicely underneath a root sign. In the same way, 18 is 9 times 2. And why did I choose 9 times 2? Because 9 will work nicely under a square root. So now let's apply that square root. The square root works nicely with the 36 and out pop 6. However, root 3 remains. The same way, the square root of 9, 3 pops out and the root of 2 remains. It's still stuck inside. Now, what was the square root of 3? It was B. So 6 times the square root of 3 is 6 times B or 6B. In the same way, 3 times the square root of 2 is going to be 3 times, what's the square root of 2? A. There is our final answer, 6B minus 3A. Right, moving to question 1.3. They give you this. Given x squared plus 2kx is equal to negative 5k minus 6. The question, show that that, what's that? The discriminant or delta is equal to 4k squared minus 20k plus 24. Now, just to remind you, you what this whole delta thing is all about, we've got a thing known as the quadratic formula. When we work out the values of x in an equation and it doesn't factorize nicely, we can use the quadratic formula x is equal to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That underneath the square root is known as the discriminant or delta. And the value of that, b squared minus 4ac, will tell you the nature of the roots or what your answers would look like. Would they be real answers? Would they be non-real? Would they be equal? Would they be rational? Would they be irrational? And so on. So this question now involves delta, meaning we focus purely on what is underneath that square root, right? The nature of roots, remember, talks about what your answers would look like without actually solving for your answers. So in order to tackle 1.3.1, we first have to take the question and get it into ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. Get it into that format. So that means that the x squared plus 2kx must be joined by a plus 5k plus 6, right? Leaving us with equals 0. Let's just rearrange it to get it into, well, I think it is already, yeah. ax squared plus bx plus c. a, what's the value of a? a is the 1. What's the value of b? b is the coefficient to x. There's the term with x in it, so b's value is 2k. And c's value is the leftover stuff. There, there, c, 5k plus 6. So now that we've gotten it into this format and we've deduced what a, b, and c's values are, we can now say that delta is equal to, and I'm going to write b squared minus 4ac. Great. Now let's apply this formula. B, remember we said was 2k, so 2k all in brackets squared, minus 4a, what was a? 1, what was c? 5k plus 6. Now just to clean it up, delta is equal to 2k all squared is 4k squared, 
and this minus 4 can be multiplied into the bracket negative 4 times 5k is negative 20k and negative 4 times the 6 is negative 24. Right, and we have successfully reached 1.3.1 showing that delta is 4k squared minus 20k minus 24. There it is. Okay, this little section of work can catch a lot of students because we don't repeat it and revise it throughout the year, but please remember delta, all these formulas that go with it. Right, we have got a 1.3.2. Let's turn to that now. It said, determine the values, where is it, where is it? Determine the value or values of k if there are two real, equal, and rational roots. Now, remember from the previous 1.3.1, we proved that delta was equal to 4k squared minus 20k minus 24. Right? So we've got delta equal that. Now, if we have to, if we are told that there are two real equal rational roots, now of those one, two, three keywords there, the biggest one to spot is that the roots are equal. In other words, you're going to have two answers or two values, but they are the same. When your roots are equal, it means that delta is equal to zero. So, the delta's value is that there. So, I can now say that 4k squared minus 20k minus 24 is equal to naught. And now we're going to solve for k as they are asking. And we're going to probably use quadratic trinomial. First of all, to make life a bit simpler, I would divide everything by 4. Do you agree? Everything can go into 4, or 4 can go into everything here. So, dividing everything by 4, k squared minus 5k minus 6 equals naught. So using quadratic trinomial, I'm going to factorize it as k and k. How do we get to 6? We're going to choose uh, negative 6 and positive 1. Happy? Making k equal to 6 or k equal to negative 1. Right? The big important thing to remember was Equal roots implied that delta is equal to zero. That's why I could move on like that. 1.3.3, they ask you to determine the value or values of k if the roots are non-real. Now, from the previous page here, remember we had this formula over here, the quadratic formula, where delta was underneath a square root sign. Now, if delta underneath a square root sign ended up being negative, we would have had the square root of a negative number. And if you have a square root of a negative num number, it's going to freak out. It's not going to work. Making the roots non-real. So, moving out from that formula and just talking about delta, it would mean that delta is smaller than zero for the roots to be non-real. So, what was delta? Delta was 4k squared minus 20k, minus 24. And we are now going to say that delta is smaller than zero. That 4k squared minus 20k minus 24 simplified or factorized into k minus 6 and k plus 1. Right? Do you agree from the previous question? There we go. And we're going to say that that is smaller than zero. This little crocodile from back in the day, we are called inequalities. So that means we're not just going to have one, two answers, but we're going to have a whole bunch of answers. Remember, a way that we can approach these questions is to draw a little number line. What are the two critical values? Negative one and six. So everything on this number line that generates answers that are smaller than naught would be areas of the number line we want. So I would draw hollow circles there because there's no line over there. I could substitute in a value. So if I substitute in a number to the right of 6, let's say 10. If I substitute in 10 over here, 10 minus 6 is 4. 10 plus 1 is 11. 4 times 11 is 44. That makes everything to the right of 6 positive. 
meaning in the middle, negative answers, meaning to the left of negative 1, positive answers. Happy how I determined my positive minus positive. Now we've got to choose the area of this number line that we want. This had to be smaller than naught, meaning we are going to pick this area where negatives live. Our final answer then would be in the form of an inequality, negative 1 up to 6, k lies in the middle, and our crocodiles, our inequalities, go in that direction like that. Happy. Right, nature of roots done. Please practice these a lot more as they can get a little bit confusing, especially if you haven't done them in a while. Right, we move on to number 2 or 2.1 where we're going to solve for x in a bunch of scenarios. First of all, 2.1. And they do give you this little hint here, two decimals where necessary. Right, so we may have to use the what? The quadratic formula if we can't factorize. In this case over here, how would we factorize this equation? We're going to factorize using which method? Quadratic trinomial, right? Meaning x squared is an x times an x. 12, how do we get to 12? We can say 1 times 12 or 2 times 6 or 3 times 4. And the combination that will also give you 7 is a 3 times a 4. The positive here means that the signs have to be the same, either positive, positive, or negative, negative. And that negative means they will both be negative. Our answer is therefore this bracket, x would equal 3. We have to use the word or, x equals 4. Done with 2.1.1. In 2.1.2, 6x minus 7 is equal to 4 over x. Now, in order to progress with this question, that x is not making life easy for us. So to get rid of that x, we are going to multiply everything by x. Multiply, I'm going to write here, multiply all by x. So we're going to get rid of that denominator. So if we times everything by x, 6x becomes 6x squared. Minus 7 becomes minus 7x. Equals and 4 over x multiplied by x will leave us with 4. Before we consider quadratic trinomial, we need to move this 4 across. So 6x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. Now, if we are going to try use quadratic trinomial, chances are we're going to hit a dead end, meaning we have to use the quadratic formula and have our answers rounded off to two decimal places. So, x is equal to minus b, let's write the formula here to remind ourselves, minus b plus or minus the square root of, can you recall, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Right, so let's apply that. Minus b, there is our b value there, minus 7. So we are going to say minus of minus 7, agree? plus or minus, open brackets, b squared, so minus 7 all squared, minus 4, what was a's value? 6, and what was c's value? Negative 4. Okay, all over 2, and what's a's value? 6. Great. Let me just move up our page here. There we go. So now let's just clean it up. We're almost there. X is equal to negative times a negative 7 is 7, plus or minus. Now this bracket, negative 7 all squared is 49. And negative times negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. But negative 24 times negative 4 will give a positive uh, 96. So that 49 or that hole underneath the root sign, ends up being 145. You're welcome to check that with your calculator. All over 2 times 6 is 12. Right? That plus and that minus then each have a turn. So I'm going to use my calculator and just show you what we need to push. We're going to say, let's go, yeah, fraction, 7 plus, the square root of 
145 over 12. That rounded off to two decimal places is 1,59. So x is equal to 1,59 or x is equal to, and the other option is where you have a subtraction or minus over there. So you're going to say x minus the square root of 145 over 12. And that answer, rounded off to 2, is negative 0, 0,42. Okay, so because your quadratic trinomial was not possible, you had to use the quadratic formula, and hopefully you got the same answer as I did. Okay, you'll always get one or two of those in an exam in grade 11. Okay, and even in grade 12. Moving to 2.1.3, we've got a confusing looking question here, but let's see, hopefully it's not too bad. 27 to the power of that is equal to 3 to the power 3x squared times 9. Right, before we really get stuck in, 27, 3, 9. Those three bases should all become the bases of 3. So 27 is 3 to the power 3, all to the x squared plus x. 3 is fine, it's currently got the base of 3, and 9 is 3 squared. Agree? Before we get rid of the bases, 3 to the power 3 means that this 3 can times out with their exponent. So 3 to the power 3x squared plus 3x equals... When the bases are the same and you're timesing, you add the exponents. So the right-hand side becomes 3 to the power 3x squared plus 2. Now you've got a left-hand side equals a right-hand side, one term equaling one term, and both bases are 3s. So we can drop the bases. We no longer need the 3s as bases, and we're going to be left with 3x squared plus 3x equals 3x squared plus 2. Significantly easier. If you take the 3x squared over, you will notice that the 3x squareds cancel each other out. And you'll have 3x equals to 2. Last step, x is equal to 2 over 3. Happy. 2.1.2 is an inequality that we dealt with just now. Negative x squared is smaller than or equal to negative x. If I choose to leave my negative x squared there, it's going to be joined by a plus x is smaller than or equal to naught. Right? However, if I'm going to progress with this question, I don't like having a negative x squared there. I'd rather have x squared minus x. In other words, I'm going to change my signs. If I change the signs of my question, this inequality is going to have to change direction. Now, the x squared indicates that I should have two answers to consider. I would now take out a highest common factor of x. What remains? x minus 1 is smaller than or equal to 0. Sorry, greater than or equal to 0. Remember, because there's an inequality, we're not just choosing one or two answers. We're choosing a range of answers. So you're welcome to use a number line to get to the bottom of this question. What are the two critical values here? This x has a critical value of 0. This x has a critical value of 1. Now, just like we did in the recent question, we are going to substitute in a value or values to find out where our story is greater than or equal to naught. In other words, positive. So if I just substitute in a value to the right of 1, Let's say 2. 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1, obviously 1. 2 times 1 is therefore 2, meaning everything to the right of 1 gives us positive answers. In between would be negative, and to the left of naught would be positive as well. So I can put circles there. I can color in these circles because we've got a equals 2 line. I can color in that one as well. And what areas am I going to choose? The outsides or the middle? I'm going to choose the outsides. Why? Because I want greater than or equal to naught. In other words, the positive areas. So x is therefore smaller than or equal to naught, this area, or 
x is greater than or equal to y. 2.2 is a simultaneous equations question, one which you'll always get going forward. They tell you to solve for x and y, and obviously we're going to use simultaneous methods. So the first equation, x minus 2y equals 1, and here's the next one that contains a square. If there's a square, it means we're going to end up with two answers for x and two answers for y. Now let's not make life too difficult here for ourselves. The first step is for us to rearrange this equation, and I'd suggest that we're going to make x the subject of the formula. x is equal to 2y plus 1. And if this was our original equation 1 and equation 2, you have now manipulated equation 1, and you could call this new equation equation 3. Now, the numbering of these equations is not essential, but it just helps lay out your answer in a nice, neat way. Now that x is equal to something, we are now going to substitute this third equation into the second equation. So, y squared plus 3. Now, we're not writing x anymore, because what is x equal to? 2y plus 1. And there's a y is equal to 4y. So there are now no longer any x's to deal with. We've only got y's to deal with. Just to make life a bit easier, instead of having a y over there, I'm going to put it over here. 3y brackets 2y plus 1 equals 4y. So we're clearly going to be solving for y here. y squared plus, now let's multiply 3y into the bracket. We're going to get 6y squared plus 3y, and I'm going to bring my negative 4y across to make it equal to 0. Okay, we've got y squared plus 6y squared, so how many y squareds have we got? We've got 7y squared, and we've got 3y minus 4y is negative y equals naught. Square, meaning we're going to have two answers for y, so we're now going to be able to take out an HCF of y. What is left? 7y minus 1 equals 0. So now we're ready to read off the two values for y. What are they? This first y, y would equal 0. Or this y, let's go slowly, 7y minus 1 would equal 0. 7y would equal 1. So y would equal 1 over 7. So we've now got our two values for y. y is equal to 0, or y is equal to 1 over 7. Remember, we now need to find the values of x. So we're going to substitute both of those values for y into equation 3. So instead of saying 2 times y plus 1, I'm going to go 2 times 0 plus 1 for this option for y making x equal to 1. Or, let's move down a bit here. Or, x would equal 2 times, what was this y's option? 1 over 7 plus 1. So, x would be equal to 2 over 7 plus 1. And I guess 1 is 7 over 7, if you like. Making x equal to... 9 over 7. Great. So we've successfully worked out the two values for y, 0, and 1 over 7, and for x, 1, or 9 over 7. Please do, do not make silly mistakes in simultaneous equations. There really are good marks up for grabs if you concentrate. Right. We move on to 2.3, which is the last little section of this worksheet. And the question 2.3 says, given the square root of 5x minus 1 is equal to 2x minus 1. And 2.3.1 asks you to solve for x. Remember, this question has got a square root sign. So in order to get rid of it, we would square both sides. Right, let me write it here for you to remind you. Square both sides. If we square the left-hand side, what are we going to get? 5x minus 1. In other words, the squaring of it, let me actually do that, the squaring of the left 
cancels with the square root. I would also have to square the right hand side. And by so doing, I actually get 2x minus 1 times another 2x minus 1, which we are now going to FOIL. So 5x minus 1 equals, let's FOIL this, we're going to get 4x squared minus 2x minus another 2x plus 1. Right, because there's a square, it tells us we're going to have two answers. So we have to make it all equal to naught. 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x minus another 5x is minus 9x plus 1 plus another 1 is plus 2. Happy? Now to solve for x, we're going to use quadratic trinomial like that. And our factors in our trinomial will be 4x minus 1 and x minus 2. Happy? So the answers for x, x equals a quarter or x equals 2. Now, be careful. We always have to check your answers. Due to the squaring process of getting rid of the square root, one of these answers could potentially be wrong. So watch carefully here. Going back to the original question, if I substitute a quarter into my original question, let's see what happens. The square root of 5 brackets a quarter, right, I'm bringing in that x value, minus 1. So our left-hand side, when subbing in a quarter, gives me a half. However, if I go to the right-hand side and sub in a quarter, like this, what do I get? Negative a half, meaning that x of a quarter is not a solution, because when subbing it in, my left-hand side did not equal my right-hand side. If you do it with the 2, you would see that you do have the left and the right both equaling each other. So you have to eliminate the quarter. That's a question or a part of the answer that many students forget. In 2.3.2, our very last question, it says, what values of x will make the square root of 5x minus 1 non-real? So this question is testing your knowledge that the square root of a negative won't work, will be non-real. In other words, 5x minus 1 would have to be less than 0. Making it negative, square root of a negative is not going to work. So let's solve for this inequality. 5x would then be smaller than 1, making x smaller than 1 over 5. Happy. Right, so I trust that this revision worksheet is to your benefit, that hopefully you've, you've learned a little bit and dusted off some cobwebs. Good luck for, for the next year. I will hopefully upload a few more videos soon.